Welcome back, Petro fans. In this video, we are going to take an old Bennett 646 gas pump that was covered with black paint over the original decals and original Richfield paint, and I'm going to show you a technique that we use to remove this paint to bring back its original glory. Also, a special guest, John Jones, will be joining us and he is going to actually show us how to create patina on a new globe body that he purchased for his Southwest 90 gas pump. You guys have seen this pump before in a previous video. This is a 646 Bennett that I picked up. Out here in California, most of these Bennetts were branded Ridgefield, including this one. Um, somebody took some black paint over the years and completely painted over the decals, the ad glass, the sight glass, the emblems, everything. Um, this video is going to show you one way to remove old paint. This is just one approach. It depends on how thick the paint is, what approach you would take. This is my friend Antonio scraping paint off the old Bennett. We also used a Wagner heat gun for part of this process, but what you're looking at here is about two hours after we started on this pump. The sides came out pretty nice, as you can see, the original blue paint popping back out. Um, the ad glass had some decals that said boron. I thought that looked better than the original ethyl under the decal. And uh, let me tell you, this is a very tedious process. This isn't something you're going to rush and have results you know, within 30 minutes. We probably spent a good three hours each working on this pump. So that's like six man hours to finish this project. There are several different techniques to bring back an original finish. This time we decided to go with the scrape and peel approach. I've seen people use chemical strippers. I've tried that in the past. The reason I don't like using chemical strippers is not only the fumes, but the fact that a lot of times the stripper will eat away at the decals to where decals lose color and depth. Um, this is a slow process, but it does work. In a previous video, you witnessed me uh, restoring an original finish using wet and dry sandpaper. That also works well. It all depends on how thick the paint is and what type of paint was used to top coat over it. Antonio and I are very pleased with the outcome. Here it is again, the before shot and the after shot. We're probably going to go in and do a little touch up here and there, mix some yellow paint to match. 
Um, but overall, we're both really happy with the outcome of this project, and we look forward to trying this again in the future. What's up, everybody? Jones here. Gasp up, John. Whatever you want to call me. I don't care. It don't bother me. Anyways, so I'm actually going to show you guys a cool little thing. Y'all know I like to play around with patina stuff and whatever else. So I'm going to show you a trick on what I do to get my gloves to look good and uh, crust them up and whatever else. One thing I want to say is, first off, thanks to Gas Pump Rob for posting this on one of his videos. Two, I want to put a shout out to Pogo's Garage. This uh, globe is going to house the Sippo uh, lenses that they did for me. Um, and then also three, I want to send out to Gas Pump Heaven, Diane and Andy. They always hook me up with some good stuff. Uh, but anyways, let's get started. So I'll take you through here. Of course, you know, the garage has got a kind of bunch of stuff, whatever else. But anyways, all right. So I just like to clean my stuff at the beginning with some lacquer thinner. It, you know, one thing that's good about lacquer thinner, it evaporates quick. It's a, uh, it's a quick solvent also. So, you know, it'll, it'll break down everything you need to. And, um, don't get that on some nice paint because, you know, you know, it breaks down quick and it dries quick. Still ruin some stuff. So here's a 15 inch globe body. Um, it's a repop body from Gas Pump Heaven. And love it. It's gonna look good on my Southwest 90. So the first thing I did was I actually went ahead and um, did a first pass, a second pass, and a third pass. Okay. Clearly, this is the first pass. That is the debris, the oil. All kinds of stuff that ends up on the body itself. Um, usually when they ship it, sometimes they like to put a little oil in the bag that keeps it from rusting. And then I do a second pass and a third pass. And as it goes, each one goes, I'll have less and less. So I'm going to prime it next. And then I'll have some more step-by-steps -step for you guys. All right. Anyways, stay tuned in. Remember, hit that like and subscribe button for uh, Gas Pump Rob's videos. They're awesome. He works hard at them, and he really appreciates it. Thanks, guys. All right. Sorry. Sound like Darth Vader for a second there. I mean, he was James Earl Jones, but technically, it was a white guy that played Darth Vader. But it was James Earl. Anyways, I'm, de I'm deviating. Sorry. Anyways, guys, always make sure to have a respirator. You don't want to breathe in these fumes. You know, the VOCs. And then there's some other things I like to use. I do like to use this little can nozzle. Ah, excuse me for a second. So I like to use that little spray nozzle right there. It kind of helps with control. Don't have to worry about paint on you. This is my little makeshift box to spray it in. Look, man, I'm making a crusty globe body. I don't care what I spray it around. As long as I don't get it on my other stuff around here. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, so this is what we're going to do. You're gonna see a little spraying, nice little pattern. Always shake well and test it. Good to go. So I like to do a nice little clean pattern. You know, so when I airbrushed, you always wanted to go spray before and then spray after. All right, so don't get too heavy on it. All right. So that's just a quick pass. I'm gonna go finish off the rest and we'll get back to you in a minute. Oh my gosh, look at this humble sign. Oh my God, it's almost perfect, right? No, not because it's freaking fake. You know what I mean? Which you know what? That means it makes it a perfect, perfect platform to spray on. All right, so. Inside of the body is already primered. Okay. Got his first pass now if you guys don't know some of the things that are really cool for putting these glow bodies on the spray little plastic container sometimes you can even use the little spray mixing containers that you can get at walmart these little measuring cup ones they're perfect turn them upside down ready to roll anyways we're going to continue with the rest of the body going to get primered and then we'll get back to you What's up, everybody? We're back. Semester's done for me. I've got gas pump time. 
So we're getting back onto this globe here. Uh, let me show you real quick. So usually I like to do a white, especially with colors like red, which is just what it's going to end up being. So I laid my white down. I'm about to lay some red down, and then I'm going to start showing y'all what I do to make it pop. Be ready. All right, so colors of choice because this is going to be a red crackled paint and like rustic brown kind of thing effect whatever anyways uh like i said this is not meant to be a pristine paint job we are going for a nice patina look we're going to try to emulate some of the crackle that happens off in here onto this bad boy right here anyways first layer of reds down i'll let it chill for a bit i'll do a pass with the brown it's kind of like a fog and then we'll come back we'll do another red and then we'll do another fog and then we're going to build it up and then we're going to make it crunch, crackle and pop and do everything. Stay tuned. All right. So I've done a little bit of dusting already with the brown and I should do it with a little black. But you just like, it's like a ways away. When I say a ways, I mean like this far away. So you're just gonna take this like pattern of kind of keeping your distance. You're just wanting to fog it is really what you're doing. So a little bit of paint gets on, a little bit of spray is heavier, a little bit of spray is less. It's a back and forth thing. And then you come back with your other your original color again and you keep layering it until we get to where we're gonna need to make the crackle effect. Are in the hole! So I've toasted it up for the first time. I look like I'm looking at the camera wrong. Maybe I should be looking over this way or over this way. I don't know, whatever. Anyways, so I usually come in, I use some aircraft paint remover. So I will take my paint remover with the designated brush. Ooh, look at that fine brush. And I'm going to just put this stuff all over it. Now remember, you can deactivate it with water. So, the longer you let it sit, the more it begins to make its nice effect. This one's already starting to take place in some areas, it's quick. But I want it to bubble up a little bit more and then we'll play around with it some more. Also, this stuff is pretty, pretty uh, high in fumes. In, some cases, I should say, really. Right now, I got enough breeze throwing through my garage, and I don't have my gale force wind 
fans on, so I'll be alright. If I pass out, somebody call 911. But yeah, I like to go through, find a few spots. Now, I've also done this where I'll put on the aircraft paint remover and I'll let it sit and then I'll ignite it and then knock it out with water. So, all depends. Depends on how it's looking, how I want it to look overall. We're back with some water. Let's toast this boy. Ooh. Oh, ooh, bubbles. I got a little backdraft of those fumes, and I was like, oh, snap, put on your freaking mask. Oh, God, you're going to die. All right. So if you look, you can see some blistering happening. Oh, man, this is going to be beautiful. And you can see the little changes in color in this area right here. And that's still some stuff that I need to burn off. And then where it shows the white, what's cool about that is I can go back and add a little spray stain and it'll pick it up. You can see where it blistered right there. All good stuff, no matter what. All good stuff. Let me switch it back with it. Yeah, there we go. Hey, how you doing? Hey, all good stuff. So everything's going to come along smoothly. It's looking all right. I wanted to make all these funky patterns and look like skin boiling and whatever else because then when we go and we want to make a peel we can make a peel and we can do all kinds of stuff i took the globe out did a little more extra stuff you guys didn't see on camera but i'll tell you what i did all i did was take some brake cleaner spray it down on wet concrete by the way light the bad boy on fire let it burn off put a little more aircraft remover on it light it on fire rinse it off a little more brake cleaner add a little bit more color light it again anyways so, this right here, it's not off anymore, okay? I'm just going to let you know, pharmaceutical fact, because since I'm in pharmacy school, 50%, anything higher than 50% on DEET is not any more effective than 50% of DEET. So, just letting you know that. Anyways, so I put in here my stain, thinned it out with a little bit of lacquer thinner, and uh, what's cool about this is it gives me a nice little spray that I can use. So, I've actually put some on in this area right here, but we'll do a little more right here. Let me see if I can get it within. Okay, that's adding a little color. Got a little magic eraser, any kind of sponge, whatever. And kind of just spread it around a little bit. So, you don't want it too heavy. And then start creating your color. Now, what's cool is 
this globe is going on those skins for that pump, which is my Southwest 90. So, and it will be done in Sippo. Sippo is the theme, uh, theme that it's going to be done in. It's actually based out of San Antonio. Uh, Pogo's Garage redid the lenses. Uh, they sold a few. They got me a set. And I love it. They look great. So it's going to be a really cool pump. Can't wait to look for it to be done. That's my whole step to kind of getting my globes to look the way I want them. You can play around with the fire a little more. You can play around with, um, with fresh spray paint. Like as soon as you put it down, throw a plastic bag on top of it. Crinkle it up. Peel it off. Doing it again, crinkle it up, peel it off. Then shoot your next color, put it on top, crinkle it up, peel it off. And as soon as you do that, it's going to reveal the color below. So the more you keep staggering your colors, the more layered effect you'll get. You can still come back with hit it with the flame, get it to bubble up. Um, you could do the uh, vinegar and hydrogen peroxide and salt mix to create some rusting, whatever you feel. But have fun with it. Do what you got to do. Make the gloves look good. And, you know, try to have just an overall great time with this. I mean, it's a great hobby to be in. Thanks, Gas Pump Rob. Appreciate everything. Uh, once this thing's all complete and done, I'll get pictures to Rob and we'll get it up on the video. <laughs>